game room. Shout out to TB room, uh, that other room, uh, that that new game room. You know, shout out to the uh, shout out to everybody in the lab. Now I mean, Chelsea, I see you. Don't worry, Ian, is that you back there? Well, A B conversation here, and on this segment we'll be talking about what happened up in the Mac. Yeah, you, Anthony, sure, you sure you want to tread these waters here, Ben? Yeah, I mean, shout out to Anthony Carlo because the championship game was on a Monday. It was. I saw Anthony in school. He went to class. He was getting his education and then said, oh, I got to go to the Mac. Up to Albany I go. And then went up to Albany. So, Anthony... Kudos, man. You know, it's something more like Ian Sachs would do. That's something more than he would do, but he didn't. He was up at the match. Selfish. You Ian, know, he, he, was with, he was with Kenny. Like, Ian just stopped trying. He's showing in the tell you with Kenny. Like, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, here he comes to say something. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that, Sachs. But, Anthony, you were up there. We saw Ian Sachs on ESPN2 in the background. I did see him. You know, Ian was in the cut. But... What happened in this game? By the end of the game, I wish I wasn't there Ooh. anymore. Ooh. Uh, listen, watching the game, uh, it was just apparent that Iona couldn't do anything against Manhattan. Uh, Manha- the Jaspers controlled the game the whole time. I mean, there was not there was there was not much Iona could do in terms of making shots because the Jaspers pressed every the, the life out of Iona. The mess. They pressed the life out of Iona. They are not a dumb team. They came into the game looking to take Iona off the perimeter and not let them shoot any threes. They were successful. Now, the shots Iona did get, which Tim Clue said uh, in the press conference, that they got the same shots they did the day before against Monmouth. They just didn't hit them. And even though the Jaspers played good D and played it really an all-around good game offensively as well, there were a lot of shots A.J. English took. There were a lot of shots uh, Isaiah Williams took that they just did not make. They didn't make the baskets, and it comes down to that. The only real excitement. It was a, it was, it was back and forth. I only was down first half. They cut it to two off that A.J. three. And then the second half, it got close until like what, three minutes, you could say. That's when Manhattan really turned up on them. And you could say the big factor for that turn up by Manhattan was Panky. The big man in the paint. Look, Ashton Pankey, th- let me be honest here. I know I go to Iona and everything, but there are no superstars on Manhattan's team. I don't care if somebody wants to stay, nah, say... Uh, Emmy, uh, Emmy Andujar is truth. He's, not, he's nice uh, with it. You know Emmy Andujar is nice with it. Emmy Andujar is good, but he's not great. Yeah, he's nice with a- it. Ashton Pankey is good, but he's not great. Storks, good. Good defender. Sean Storks, good, not great. Yo, who's to do with the ugly jump shot? Oh, so that's ugly. that's Kate's Donovan. Yeah, Kate. his shot is and here's ugly. A, here's an interesting oh fact: Donovan goodness. Kate's couldn't hit one three all year. He hits four against Iona. Oh, yeah, it was that type of night. Everything went right for the Jaspers, and everything went wrong for the Gales, including Kelvin Amayo trying to dunk the ball, wasn't able to do so. If Kelvin dunks that ball, and I'll say this time and time again, the, Iona wins the game, mm-hmm. or at least. It's, it's a tougher last two minutes of that game. The Jaspers don't take a 10-point lead and continue to build on their lead. If Kelvin dunks that ball, it's a momentum swing. And the momentum swings in Iona's favor, and Iona makes a better effort at winning that game. Yeah, because after that dunk, nobody ran back on defense. Yeah, and, and it's just another thing, and it frustrates me time and time again, and I know it's the type of game Iona is built for. They're built for making threes, but when you are in a game like they were with BYU in the tournament, like they were with Ohio State, and you realize that you're not able to shoot the three anymore against a tough team like they were against Manhattan a couple of nights ago, you have to be able to score another way. You know, I don't care if you build a team on shooting threes. Great. And I understand that if you take away from that a little and try and work on a backup plan, you're not going to be as good as they were at shooting threes, setting records and all the rest. But maybe it'll benefit you when you're in that moment and you're being really held down by a team that you can say to yourself, listen, we planned during the year to go with our shooting the three game plan, but we prepared for what if it doesn't work and we score inside. That changes things, Ben. That changes things if you can go towards another part of your game and not be one dimensional and just give it all away when you can't hit a three. 
and the um but if I own it I own it doesn't have a really a plan B option when Dave's the only big man though. Dave Dave's the only one that and, could, and, that could really eat down there. Which he did. Yeah, he had double double. And Dave's not even a center. He's not even a real center. He's he's a forward. It was getting flashy with it. Yeah, you're he, he right. Caught that dude. He ain't gonna lie. He caught him. Shout no, out to Dave. No, Dave can score inside. There's no doubt about that. Kelvin can score inside, but the fact is, is they didn't score inside enough. Manhattan dominated them in the paint. Ashton Pankey was the reason for most of that. Emmy Andohar is another one who can drive drive the lane and, and score inside. They really can't slow him down. And another thing is Iona's e defense just gets eaten up in the paint. I mean, there's just no... They have no ability to guard against Panky or Andohar going in the paint. And let me tell you something interesting here, Ben. What was interesting here is the game plan Steve Masiello put out there for Manhattan, which was a game plan, mind you, given to him by his point, Rashawn Stores, was a game plan to basically say, let David Lowry do what he will, we'll take care of the rest. Mm. And what they did there was they fanned out, they fanned out David, and they went with single coverage, and they decided to take out AJ, Isaiah, and Cedric, and they mugged them. They mugged him on the three-point line, and they and Ashton played single coverage on Dave, and Dave scored his 24, got his 10 rebounds, but guess what? They lost. AJ was held to 10. Mm. Isaiah was held to 7. Mm. Cedric, I don't even know what Cedric had. I don't even know if he had anything. It was low. It was low. Kelvin Amayo had 10, but the fact is, is that, the fact is, is that, AJ had 32 in the first game and 29 in the second game. Isaiah had 27 in the semifinal, and none of them, none of them made an impact. Well, we're not, we're just, we're just speaking the truth. This is what happened. Manhattan did do this to Iona. They, they were successful, but this the third, that was the third time they was playing Manhattan, and you know third, third times. What was that? Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm for um for Manhattan. They did get the W. They are they did get that qualifying bid. They are in the tournament. Now for Iona, their season their season is not over. Most likely they will be in the NIT. But as a program you win you win the Mac. You win the regular season. You come in to the tournament looking like you're gonna win. You know, even though Sienna gave them their money's worth, that was a scare. That was a scare. I told Sean that too. Sean ain't believe me. Sean Edwards. I told you Sienna was gonna give him a scare. That was a big scare. And uh, I know. Thank you. And Sienna had a whole stadium full of fans who exploded. That was a home the, game for them. And you know what was worrisome, but you know what was interesting? I was worried more when I was watching Iona in Manhattan in a game in the second half where Iona actually tied the game up a couple times. Like 60-60, right? Yeah, a couple times they tied it up. I was worried more in, in that second half than I was when Sienna cut the 14-point deficit or 13-point deficit down to two with like a minute remaining. I was more relaxed with Iona winning the Sienna game than they were than they were with Manhattan because with Manhattan all of a sudden when things started breaking down everything started breaking down they were just chucking up shots with Siena they composed themselves they came out of a timeout and AJ English hit a big three like he has all year long so from here as Ben said the NIT probably is there any hope Ben or can you put this rumor to rest that the Gales might get an at large bid like they did a couple of years ago when they had a great record and lost to uh, lost in the championship that year in the MAC. That that team was that that team was the BYU team or no no the, the well, they lost in the Ian pointed out they lost in the semifinals in that in that year so and they still got an at large bid so um, oh yo know, for hopefully they get that 16 seed and then they fight out for whoever else is in that 16 seed like they did years ago but I think the NIT will be Iona will be partaking in the NIT but that's not as a season as a program Iona is still making strides they're top the top 7 in field goal percentage top 20 in offense this this team is a running gun offense so even for players that um are looking at Iona yo come play for Iona you're going to run you're going to play offense if you like to score with with everybody likes to score right I like to score. You like to score. Everybody likes to score. You should come to Iona. 
All right, there's there's Ben's pitch. Moving from college basketball to a little NBA, what do we got? Knicks lost against Utah, and they lost against um, Denver. Bagnani's been doing his numbers. I'm not going to lie to you. Andrea Bagnani has been putting up numbers. But his it's it's too little too late for Bagnani. You were injured most of last year. You were injured most of this year. In the last 25 games, which means nothing. So Bagnani's really taking in that mindset of, yo, I'm trying to I'm trying to play well so I can get paid somewhere else. Because it's not... It did not work out for Andrea Bagnani in New York. Let me ask you something. Who who do you think is going to win the MVP in the NBA? Uh, Hamas Harden. So you think James Harden is? Hamas, yes. I think that he's had probably the best year out of all of them. But I have to be honest. Russell Westbrook is really making a run for 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 the MVP here. I mean, he is in the top five of the of three. So three of the four major NBA statistical categories. Assists, points per game, and um, and steals, I believe. Mm-hmm. He's in the top five of that, and the guy just d- is a triple-double machine. Um, you know, he has the ability to, to impact the game on so many levels and really lead OKC to the playoffs. So I really think that he should be in the conversation, and it shouldn't be laughed at. Like I was watching ESPN not too long ago. I forgot who said it. That Russell Westbrook was the player he wanted on his team over LeBron, over James Harden, over you know anybody. And he was laughed at for that. I don't think I don't think Russell should be laughed at for that. Russell is a player that you have not seen. You never seen a guard like him that explosive. A guard like him that can still dish it. A guard like that. He can get his own boards. Even though they did lose, they got clanked last night by CP3. I told him, Yo, I'm still in town. I'm still in the West. You're probably going to see me in the playoffs. And that, they lost that game, so they're not even in the playoffs. He's having a big year, Chris Paul. Chris Paul, he's doing Chris his thing Paul. without Blake Griffin. Chris Paul is having a big, big year. And DeAndre Jordan. And he's really, he's affecting the game every, he's not only he's not only assisting, but he is he got, he got he's scoring. scoring. He's got everything going for him. He's feisty, that Chris Paul. No um, Highland. You know DeAndre Jordan's first name, Highland? I did not know that. Yeah, Highland. That's his first name. Isn't DeAndre leading the league in rebounds? Most likely, yes. I think he's leading the league. Shout out to Andre Drummond, to a young, emerging 22-year-old, passing Shaq, passing Moses Malone for youngest player with 25 rebounds throughout his uh, first, before the age of 23. So DeAndre, um, Andre Drummond, born in Mount Vernon, That's if, a big, if you didn't know that. That's a big accolade. So That's, that's a big one. That's a young pro- They say the center position is dying. Don't do that to Andre Drummond. I hope it doesn't. Nah, it's a, uh, you it's know, a vital part. You got to keep the center. It's vital. In Every team, when you go in the playoffs, why is the key factor of the playoffs is slowing it down? And when you have somebody like a Marcus Saul, you are feared. Players are fearing you because the game slows down in the playoffs, and you work inside, and you have a Marcus Saul, and you have a Zach Randolph. Yeah, and I think that I think that the get the NBA is evolving where. Point guards score a lot more today than they than they used to. Yeah, and I think that you sh- you sort of have a mesh of players, you know, at the one, two, three, and four, sort of where they 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 co- they sort of take on similar roles sometimes. And you're saying that the four, yeah, at the power forward position, the four there's more there's more wing forwards, you like a Dirk Nowinski. Yeah, yeah, and and even Serge. Yeah, exactly. And really, Dirk could be considered. I mean. I don't know. Couldn't you consider Dirk a center? Yeah, you, you, you could consider Dirk high a center. Wise, high wise, yeah, but playing style, he's a he's a he's a three. He likes to shoot. Well, yeah, yeah, playing style, he is. Um, but it's different from baseball or football because usually in those sports, when you play one position, that's your position. Mm-hmm. Except for when you want to move somebody over when they get older, like A. Rod will be moving over to first. Co- a cornerback would go to safety. Yeah, but. It's more specific, more position specific. Like you're not gonna play Eli Manning at you know wide receiver. Oh, do you remember the video with Sanchez when the Sanchez when he lined up in the Wildcat and the cornerback like fake try to like the fake like the fake like he went like that no, and Sanchez jumped and then he and then he tried to attack the cornerback to try to block and then the cornerback just pushed him down and Sanchez got called for like holding. That's funny. I remember last year, I remember, um, I believe it was, uh, was it Julian Edelman? They they ran that play. Yeah, and it was, yeah, Julian Edelman. Remember the Patriots ran that play? I don't know, uh, but Edel- Sachs remembers. Edelman threw down the field. 
And Sack gets up and yeah. he bows. All right, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, that's enough for the Patriots yeah, for today. Sorry. Too much Patriots today. Real Nick basketball. We out here. I think I think we're finished, Ben. I think we're all done for today. Um, shout out to uh, New York Nick basketball. Shout out to the season. Um, not even shout out to the season being over. I still want to watch my games. You know how hard it is to watch the Knicks play. I watch the game. I'm I'm looking at the screen like, bruh, bruh. Wait, well, why, why are you doing this to me? Oh, shout out to Alexia Shred, too. He's doing his numbers, man. Alexia Shred putting up his numbers, even though he's on Shaq and the Fool. Try to go for a layup, put it over the basket. But nah, Shred's a nice player. He was a nice talent in Minnesota, but he was in a doghouse. I, 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 I commend you for playing basketball for the New York Knicks. Uh, shout out to Alexia Galloway. You know, LG, that's my guy. Uh, free my guy, Clean Anthony. His offensive game has to um, emerge. So, it's like for the Knicks, Anthony. When people are playing them now, it's like a scrimmage. It really is. Yeah, it's like well, a scrimmage. Unfortunately, it sucks. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, that's the way the season is going. I hope that that God is going to look down on the Knicks and say, uh, the Knicks fans and say, you guys have been through enough. So next year we're going to win. Like no one, like knowing the Knicks, they're probably not going to get the number one pick. They're, they're probably not unless. Unless the basketball world is rigged. They need Oka. Look, look, look. They need him. Oh, oh, wow. I said, look, I felt like you. No, you say, listen to me. You say, listen to me and look. Yeah. Right? So, knowing the NBA, if it's truly rigged, Adam Adam Silver is now the new commissioner. This will be his first draft that he'll be leading off with. Just like how David Stern, his first draft leading off with, the, num- the balls happen to be in the Knicks' favor. If the NBA is rigged, the first-year commissioner, the Knicks will get the number one overall pick. They Boom. should get the number. Wait, what are you saying? The NBA is rigged? Look, if, get the if the NBA is rigged, the reason they would be if the Knicks get the number one pick. Because, look, new commissioner, Adam Silver. Yeah. New commissioner when David Stern came in. Yeah. The Knicks got the first overall pick. Oh, so you're looking at it in that respect. If the NBA but they should get the first overall the f- pick, Philadelphia. The, if 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 they're the oh, worst man. record, if they're the worst record, well, they gotta st- they gotta start dropping more games. No, that's bad. They have to win. If the uh the worst losing percentage only got it like twice in the last ten years, the number one overall pick. Well, yeah, I know they got Philadelphia, but Philadelphia, Minnesota, Minnesota, Lakers. Yeah. I, th- I think the Knicks will get the first. I think they'll get Oak four. Bro, if they, if they, they better get Oak four. Uh, yeah, okay. Another day for that. Another, Another day for day that. For AB that. conversation. We appreciate you listening. Uh, tune into our normal time Tuesday at six o'clock. You know we had to get that afternoon spot because we like showing our faces. So AB conversation. Enjoy your spring break. You know we'll be breaking from sports, but not me. But uh, yeah, Anthony, enjoy yourself. I'll probably see you. No, you have your internship. Have fun of your internship. If I don't see you, I'm probably gonna walk out with you anyway. But if I don't see you, Anthony, enjoy your break. Thank you, Ben. Everybody, have a good day.